Hi guys, I'm Alexandra from the website largefamilymama.com and today I wanted to share with you the books that I use or will be using for our art lessons and our handicrafts or handcraft lessons. So I've got this huge pile of books to show you here. So I have eight children and I've been homeschooling for over 10 years. I started off using the Charlotte Mason method but over the past two or three years I've been moving over to more of a Waldorf approach or Steiner education um, and so I just wanted to share with you the books that we are using this year. So the first book I've got is this one called Learning to See the World Through Drawing and it's by Waldorf Publications. It's a proper Waldorf type book. It's really good because it goes through and explains clearly how the children's art should be at what age. My favourite chapter in this book is called Drawing in the Main Lesson Books and again it shows you what the child's main lesson books should be kind of looking like at what age and some of them just are so wonderful and exceptional. Each page in a main lesson book can be such a beautiful work of art if you allow your student to have the time to do that and if they are that way inclined. I mean some children just aren't are they? They're not they're just not very interested in art but my children generally all seem to be very interested in art and drawing and painting as much as possible so there are some excellent examples of main lesson pages in here. You can help your child create those kind of main lesson pages by using inspiration from this book, um, doing the drawing on the blackboard yourself so your child can see it and then do the writing over it or you know there's all different ways. Also you don't have to use a blackboard you could you can just do it in your own main lesson book. That's the thing with Waldorf education is that the children are copying your example. It's quite easy to guide them and lead them in the way that you want and then as they get older they'll be used to working in that way. There, there's also lots of practical advice in there as to what materials you should be using um, and lots of tips on how to get better results with the drawing. Um, it's great for anyone really but particularly perhaps for parents that are homeschooling that, that haven't gone to a Waldorf school like I have not gone to a Waldorf school I've got no experience of that and so it really helps me learn how to teach in the right way. The next book I've got this is another very Waldorfy book it's called Colour Dynamics and um, as the title kind of you know says it is really talking about colours, working with the colours, how the colours make you feel, how you can use colour therapy with your children. If they are hyperactive or something then it tells you what colours you can use to help them calm down and it's not what you might think, it's actually quite different to what you're usually taught. It gives you lots of examples of different types of paintings that you can do with a certain combination of colours and also what I really love about this book is that the quotes from Rudolf Steiner and uh, Goethe, they, and this one there from Kodinsky, they, they, there's lots of different quotes and all the quotes you, are the sort that you can just ponder on for ages and they really make you think. So what I'd like to do this year is work through the whole book, well I don't know if I can get the whole book done this year but I'm going to try with the children to go through each section and try and make our own version of some of the paintings in there and it's a really great book if you want to learn more about Rudolf Steiner and Goethe's colour theory very fascinating stuff so the next book I've got is another one by the same author and it's not particularly an art book but it's creative form drawing I suppose it's kind of art but it's um, getting your children ready to be able to move into writing. This book is for, it says six to ten year olds, designed to help children develop hand-eye coordination, spatial orientation, observation skills, attention, confident movement, drawing skills and foundation skills for handwriting. So obviously your children are already going to be writing by the time they're 10 but this just helps them get more control over their bodies and their hands and their writing will become neater. Um, so it's excellent. Form drawing was originally developed by Rudolf Steiner and so it's a big part of the Steiner or the Waldorf education. When my children do form drawing they seem to calm down an awful lot and they really enjoy making all the form drawings and making their books look really pretty and colourful and everything so it's a very enjoyable lesson for us to do. I got this book recently, well about six months ago maybe a year ago and it's 
about modeling with either you know clay or play-doh or salt dough uh, and this is written by a Waldorf teacher again it goes through what kind of modeling a child should be doing at what age and it gives you lots of projects that tie into what your child will be learning at that age so for example in the fourth series they have got a project on Thor and his hammer Loki and the Midgard serpent it gives you some ideas of how to make that what colors you could use things like that and also there's lots of information at the beginning of the book as to how you should model with clay for example how you shouldn't put the clay down on the table you should always keep holding it up in your hands molding everything with your hands not pushing it down on any object use only using your hands to make the model not using any tools just really again improving how you use your hands getting to know your body there are also some lovely quotes in there i always like some good quotes so sculptural arts are definitely an integral part of the waldorf education so this book is extremely useful and it goes into such depth as to why you should sculpt things or model things. It really, really goes very deeply into it all, completely on another level. I was quite surprised when I got the book how in depth it goes. So very, very, very interesting stuff. Highly recommend that book. Another book that we use for handcrafts is this book. It's called The All New Woodworking for Kids. And I've had this book for many years. We got this book when we were doing the Charlotte Mason method but it's still, it's excellent for when you do uh, Waldorf homeschool as well. And there are lots of practical projects for children so they can make things that are actually going to be useful because that encourages children. They don't even realize they're learning when they are creating something that's got a practical use. They're just enjoying the process, knowing that the outcome is going to be useful. Uh, and so it doesn't seem like work. So that is absolutely key when teaching your children handcrafts is that you need to be able to have them create something that is going to be useful either to them or that they can give to a gift for somebody else. So in this book you have different projects such as a bike stand, birdhouse and like a cute little keepsake box. Loads of great projects and nice and simple enough for children to be able to do but also challenging enough that it's not too simple and they Feel like it's babyish so it, yeah it's really good this is another sort of quite recent purchase of mine it's called beautiful paper stars craft decorations for every season yeah I love making the Waldorf window stars but they're not super challenging and I wanted to get something that was a bit more challenging and also my older children like something that's a bit more challenging so um, I got this book and yeah it's definitely a lot more challenging than the Waldorf window stars we made some like this at Christmas time that's called the elegant snowflake um, and it's great it's a nice quiet little peaceful activity that a child can do when they just want to be quiet and do something on their own um, they can just get on with it that's obviously for older children I'd say 10 plus really but for teens excellent and also for parents because uh, I really enjoy making them as well <laughs> and they look so pretty I'll have to show you some examples at some point there's this other book called all year round a calendar of celebrations one of my most favorite things about the Waldorf education is a lot of it is about observing the seasons nature being in harmony with it all all the festivals that we celebrate today that a lot of people think are of religious origin are not they're from pagan festivals where people would celebrate the different seasons for example Christmas you know is from Yule and this was a time when they would celebrate the winter solstice and the fact that we have finally got past the shortest day of the year and now we're moving into longer days and it won't be long until food is more abundantly available and everything like that so we have a big feast with all the stuff that we've preserved knowing that shortly it's going to be easier to grow a lot more and stuff like that so it's just all about observing the seasons being in touch with nature this book gives you plenty of ideas of different things that you can do at different times of the year so for example we are now in the winter season so if we go to page 230 then it gives us some ideas there are little stories poems and then it tells you how to make origami cranes how to make little candle boats and there were lots of ideas of things that you could do for Christmas as well 
even little plays that you could act out. So for spring that's coming up next, it, it's got different projects to do, such as candles, earth candles, water dip candles, how to make flower fairies, different projects for Valentine's Day, ingredients and instructions of how to make pancakes for Shrove Tuesday. So that's a really great book and gives you plenty of inspiration of different things that you can do throughout the year with your children. Some great projects that they'll always have fond memories of creating with you. Another book for handicrafts is this book, Beginner's Guide to Crochet. This is a really, really old book. I mean, I think I've had this over 10 years now. I mean, now you can just look up anything on YouTube anyway, but if you didn't want to rely on a screen, using screens, then this is a great book because it gives you step-by-step -step instructions with a photograph for each little step. So this, I use this book actually to teach myself to crochet. I've always been able to knit since I was a little girl, but crocheting I didn't do. So this book taught me everything I know about crocheting and it's brilliant. And lastly, I just want to show you this book. This is a recent book that we were given and it's called Knitting for Children. My children love knitting and this has just got some really very simple projects that they can get on with by themselves. So here we've got a hat another hat, fingerless mitt, they can make bracelets, necklaces, bows, hairbands, pom-pom necklace, a caterpillar doorstop, patchwork blanket, loads of different projects so that's really great because then they can just get on with that by themselves and have a good old time. And I'm actually going to be filming a little mini series on knitting and how to start teaching your children knitting right from when they're preschoolers. That series should be up on my channel from Thursday so if you're interested in being able to teach your children to knit if perhaps you can't knit yourself or you just want your children to watch the videos and learn from those then make sure you're subscribed. So thank you very much for watching my little review of the books that we're using this year for our art and handicraft lessons. I hope you enjoyed it and if you would like me to show you what materials we use, what supplies we have for our art and handicraft lessons then let me know in the comments below and I can make a video on that or if you would like me to review or show you, share with you the books that I'm going to be using for another subject then also let me know in the comments below because I want to make videos that are going to be interesting to you and things that you want to know about so just let me know in the comments below and I shall do that for you. So if you have any other book recommendations for a Waldorf homeschool type of set up for art and handicrafts that I haven't covered today then please let me know as well in the comments below because I'm always looking for new stuff to add to my book collection um, just to keep it more interesting and fresh and give me more ideas and inspiration so and it would be great for everybody else to be able to see in the comments below those suggestions as well. Also just before I go I just wanted to say don't forget your local charity shop or thrift store as you say in America for books because we have found lots of brilliant books in charity shops over the years and we picked up this really old book called How to Paint and Draw and this has given my older children some great tips of how to improve. So this book is from 1974. I'm not sure if I'll be able to link it below but if I can I will. Oh it's just brilliant. It's, there's so much in that book. It's fantastic. So always look for secondhand books because they're brilliant and I think it's great to have a huge collection of books that are going to be useful and interesting to you and your children. So thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and I would love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe as that would really help this channel as it's a new channel. So yes, please do like, comment and subscribe and I shall see you very soon and don't forget that I will be starting my knitting series on Thursday. See you soon, bye.